Just a quick note before we start today's video, there is bonus content for the Imperial 3 Star Destroyer over on my second channel, X2, which sees the Imperial 3 go against the Nebula class in Awakening of the Rebellion. Now just a couple of notes, the Imperial 3 is a fan-designed ship, and the Nebula is based on pre-essential guide to warfare rendering, specifically I think from Kraken's Threat dossier, but it's still a very cool video, so if you're interested, I'll link to that down below. But let's roll the intro. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Now, today we'll be talking about a Fanon ship from the Star Wars universe. Now, what Fanon means is that this ship was never canon. Instead, it was actually imagined by a fan. And I've done a whole video covering five of these ships before, and you guys really, really enjoyed it. And it's definitely something that I'll consider doing in the future, especially when it comes to things like spaceships. Well, to me, a strict sense of canon is important when doing things like versus battles. When it comes to talking about individual ships, it's all made up so it can all be fun. And that's especially true when you look at artists like Fractal Sponge who have had their work officially adopted into Star Wars canon just because it is so good. And on that note, I also think work by people like E.C. Henry is sometimes a lot more logically consistent than what we actually get in Star Wars lore. But with that being said, let's look at an Imperial 3 Star Destroyer as it appears in the Star Wars Empire War mod Awakening of the Rebellion. An Imperial 3 is an obvious choice for a Fanon ship because there's already two Imperial class models, the Imperial Star Star Destroyer is the most famous large capital ship in the galaxy and one of the most popular. And the Imperial Line had a very long service life. However, in Legends, instead of moving to an Imperial 3, the Empire instead generally moved to smaller ships as the New Republic took Imperial class vessels and heavily modified them. Something like the Anakin Solo, which possessed more powerful turbo lasers, more varied weaponry, and an internal interdiction mechanism can almost be considered in an Imperial 3. However, what we get in Awakening of the Rebellion is quite different. Instead of this being a post-war ship, the Imperial 3 envisioned by the mod team here was actually created during the war. And here's the little blurb that we get. The Class 3 Star Destroyer is a breach in classic design. By massive changes to both hull and armor, the Class 3 was specialized for combat against almost anything the Alliance has to offer. The powerful turbo laser turrets, ion turrets, heavy laser cannons, and missile launchers make the ISD-3 very versatile and only some ships can hold their own against it. So when talking about general design principles, I do think the basics of what we've gotten here does make sense. The ISD-3 is not quite a Super Star Destroyer in power, but it is a marked improvement over the Imperial 2. The ship itself is significantly larger, it has more varied weaponry, it has more engines at the rear of the ship, and presumably because of the extra space, it also sports a larger reactor, just generally making it more powerful. One of the interesting things about the Empire is that generally, although ships like the Allegiance and the Praetor did exist, the Empire wasn't a huge fan of producing battlecruiser sized vessels. They wanted either to make something Star Destroyer sized or much, much larger, like a Dreadnought, because a Dreadnought has psychological effects that even smaller ships don't. So presumably, if they're making a ship that's this powerful, it's probably meant to eventually phase out the IST-2 and become the new mainline Star Destroyer of the Imperial fleet. And we can actually compare the strength of ISD-3s versus ISD-2s within the Empire at War Awakening of the Rebellion system. Now obviously the ISD-2 stats are in no way canon, but we can tell based on how different the ISD-3 is how much more powerful the ship is intended to be. So the ISD-3 is slower than the two despite having more engines. Presumably that's because there's a lot more mass to move around the battlefield. However, the shield is also significantly stronger. Instead of being 6,000 points, it's 9,000 points, so 50% more powerful. And similarly, the hull is 15,000 points versus 10,000 for the ISD-2. So this thing can really, really take a beating. So when it comes to weaponry, there's also a bit of diverging design. Instead of having major
major turbo laser banks on either side of the main superstructure, those same weapons have now been moved across the hall. So you only actually see three cannons on each side of the superstructure rather than the four double or a tuple barbettes that most ISD 1 and 2s have, which is fine, but we also see if you look at the hard points of the ship that a lot of the weapons are actually focused in the front section of the ship, which is kind of why it's got a different shape than the ISD-1. Presumably that extra sp at the front of the ship is basically just meant to accommodate the numerous weapon systems, and you can probably say something similar about the sort of wings at the back, because you can imagine what it would look like without those sections if it was just a triangle like the ISD-2 or 1, and just presumably the extra real estate is just to mount more guns, or more reactor space perhaps. When it comes to weapons, they also employ one thing that I really quite like, and that's the fractal sponge style ball turrets. We can see one at the front of the ship, an ion cannon, but there's also others in the ship's brim. I like that they're spread out across the ship because that means that the ISD can engage in both broadsides and target enemies directly in front of it. However, I still think actually limiting the firing arc of a ship by putting it in this sort of notch doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because now that cannon can't fire forward. And that's fine if you've got enemies on either side to fire at as well, but if there's nothing else, you're basically just wasting potential firepower. Another addition is the inclusion of missiles, and you don't see missiles very often on large Imperial ships, but I quite like it in this case. Missiles are really deadly in the Star Wars universe, especially when paired with ion cannons to take down shields. That's essentially the bread and butter of starfighter combat, so it makes sense that you'd make those additions to a larger ship. Additionally, one thing I will note is that Star Wars Empire at War, and I'm talking about the base game as well as most mods, also allow missiles to pierce through shields. So, for an example, if you're firing at a ship with a laser or a turbo laser, the shield will prevent the damage, but missiles will go straight through and damage the hard point. That's not technically how they would work in canon. While that gives the ship an even greater and actually quite significant advantage, it's not one that would translate over to the lore. So there are a few more things to talk about with weapons, and I truly think firepower is the ISD-3's greatest advantage. It reintroduces laser cannons to the ISD line, meaning that the ship is a bit more self-sufficient and can protect itself against fighters. It also has longer range cannons, similar to the upgrades we saw happen in Star Wars Legends to the ISD line, and has a special heavy weapon that can be used for brief spurts of extreme damage. Moving on though, physically, the ship isn't too much of a departure from the regular Imperial Star Destroyer line, but there are some notable improvements. For one, the shield bulbs on the ISD have been somewhat lowered into the ship's structure, which probably makes them a little more well defended and the ship itself just seems to be a little bit squatter and wider, which I think is probably a good choice. Other than that, much of the body is quite similar. I think the darker color looks nice with the other Imperial Star Destroyers, although generally I'm not sure how much I like sort of the flared design on the ship. I think it would be okay to keep the flared front, but I'd like if the wings sort of kept straight on the model, but that's just a personal preference. Other than that, the ship in the game does have improved fighters instead of carrying inter Interceptors and TIE Fighters, it has TIE Avengers, TIE Interceptors, and TIE Punishers, but really Starfighters could be allocated wherever needed, so that's not really something that I'm going to read into the ship itself. I will assume, because it is larger though, that it does have a slightly increased carrying capacity. All in all though, I do quite like the Imperial 3 Star Destroyer. I think it's largely a sensible evolution of the Imperial line. It is a bit of a Jesus ship with its great combination of shielding, hull strength, and firepower. Power, but to be fair, it does have a slower speed to offset that, and in-game, it is also very, very expensive and requires specialized production facilities even beyond that of an ordinary Star Destroyer. I know battlecruisers weren't very popular within the Empire, but I can see this being a thing that would maybe start appearing more frequently throughout battles across the galaxy. One thing though, I'm pretty sure the Imperial 3 Star Destroyer could take on almost any ship in the Alliance, as the description says, maybe some of the larger Mon Calum Marine cruisers like Home 1 could have given it a shot, but its pure firepower is really hard to stand up against. 
I do have to ask though, why no internal interdictor in this ship? Presumably the ISD-3 was meant to fight against a growing alliance threat, and given the fact that the alliance's main successful tactics involved hit and run attacks, why not put significant resources into that technology, especially where this is already a very, very expensive ship, and to be honest, where the ISD-2 generally outfires anything in the rebel fleet already? Just a thought, I would definitely be including an interdiction generator in my ISD-3, even if it meant I had to pull back pretty heavily on weapons. Out of Universe, the Imperial 3 Star Destroyer, as I mentioned, is a creation of the Awakening of the Rebellion mod. I talked to one of the mod leads, Mr. President, and it's an in-house mod, and he kind of explains it as the Zeistin before the Zeistin, and that it was meant to somewhat resemble the Republic Star Destroyer, which is also in that mod, because of some background lore that they discovered. So if you want to check out that mod, and Awakening of the Rebellion is one of my favorite Star Wars Empire War mods, especially with recent gameplay changes, it's quite different and unique, and it's a very fun experience. I'll link that down in the description. Also, I've done several playthroughs of Awakening of the Rebellion on my second channel, X2. I've done a video with Mr. President to talk about the new changes that came recently to the mod, and of course, you can see the ISD-3 take on the Nebula Star Destroyer by clicking the link that I advertised at the beginning of this video. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully come back for more. That's all I've got for you guys today. Have a good one, and may the Force be with you.